Hello everyone, Alex RC Freak here. Hopefully everyone is all and well with this whole COVID-19 virus that's going around. I wish everyone's family the best. Um, I know it's hard being in lockdown, basically. I got laid off on my job, uh, literally, like a lot of maybe you guys have been. And uh, finding a job is kind of hard right now, to be honest. I Trust me, I've looked. Um, at least here where I live in Spokane, it's been a struggle. So anyway, I'm laid off. Hopefully it's only for a short time. Um, but I guess it gives me time to kind of get my RC collection up to par, I guess you could say. So what we're working on is my Creighton 8S. And if you're looking at it, you're like, well, this isn't a Creighton 8S. This is a fifth scale servo. It is. But it's a steering servo for my Creighton 8S. So first thing I'm doing is there's a thing called silicone conformal coating. Now, let me put a disclaimer in the video just so everyone understands. And I'm only going to say it once. This will void your warranty on your servo. It does not matter the brand. It will void the warranty. It will not cause damage to the servo, most likely if it's applied correctly. But it will void your warranty. So when you do this and you put this on the circuit board... When you put this on the circuit board of your servo, because this, this servo is a Savox, let me get the number down. Uh, it's a Savox right here. Here's the part number right there. So SV0236MG. That is the servo. There's the specs. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Right there, it says 555 ounces of torque at 7.4 volts. And it's a 20, or it's 15 tooth spline, sorry. So you guys know my go-to is Savox. I would have got the waterproof one. I actually got this from Poison RC. He's my brother um, from another mother. And uh, like he, I bought this servo from him. He got it. He was thinking he was going to put it in one of his projects. And he ended up deciding to go a different route. So anyway, I bought this servo from him. It's completely brand new. Um, all you need to do is very carefully remove these four screws. There's four screws here. Okay. It's four screws. You just counterclockwise loosens them. And I just use a little screwdriver. This is a little dynamite one I have right here. It's like a two millimeter or one millimeter. It's a pretty fine tip. And basically what you do is you just take the silicone conformal coating. Now see how it's like about ready to drip? See that little drip right there? I usually take that and just wipe it off just like that. And then you just brush it on. This stuff dries pretty quickly. And you, I, I, I just did one coat. You really don't need to go any more than one coat. But just to show you guys, you just kind of go around there. And a little bit of this, this stuff goes a long way. So you really don't need a lot. You don't need to like drench the circuit board. I tried to get back in here. So basically what I did is I dipped it in, in this stuff. I dipped a silicone conformal coating in this stuff. And then just went back here like this. And went like that. And got it. So um, anyway... It takes a minute or two to dry. Um, and this is a silicone conformal coating. So this is like a waterproof stuff for electric circuit boards and stuff like that. So this is what I got. I actually got this on eBay. That's where I'd go to get it. It was like 10 bucks, 10 or 15 bucks, something like that. And it really, really works good. Now, if you guys know me, I think it's extremely stupid to drive your vehicle through a water puddle in the rain, in the snow. If you're a rock crawling guy and you like to do something really, really stupid and drive through puddles and creeks and shit with your rock crawler, I guess if you want to be an idiot, I guess be one. But I think that's really dumb because your axles, especially on a rock crawler, your axles are not waterproof. There's no seal keeping water from getting into your differential and sitting in your axle the whole time when you do that. Like, I just think it's stupid. But And then you always get those rock crawler guys, oh, God, I don't know why my truck's all locked up. Put two and two together there, big guy. Anywho, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just letting you guys know a quick little tip. Now, this does not, with caution, this does not officially make it waterproof. Um, this circuit board, I will literally break it in half. It's like somehow glued in. Literally, it's glued in. I cannot, I've tried very carefully, very carefully prying up on it a little bit to see if I can get it out. It will not come out. So, Word of caution, this makes it 
I would say this this guarantees it's water resistance because bone stock, this servo is not waterproof by any means. It's not even water resistant. Right now, I would say this is splash resistant. If worst case scenario, I had a problem with my speed control, connection of my radio system, I lost control of the vehicle and it happened to go through a puddle or something I didn't see, something, it's waterproof. Or if I'm driving, let's say, a little fast down the street and there's a little puddle off to the side I did not see, I happened to splash it on the servo, it's not going to cause damage, most likely. So, word of caution with that. But this does technically make it waterproof. I'm just not going to say officially with this because I couldn't really get to the back side of this circuit board very well. So it's really the only bottom side, which honestly, it's probably good. I could probably take it through like some water. I couldn't fully submerge it, but I could probably take through some water and it most likely would be all right, I think, honestly. So anyway, I just kind of want to do a quick video showing you guys that. Um, be very careful to not have this pop off, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, but yeah, this is what it looks like inside here. You got the motor on this side and you got another smaller motor here. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty good servo. I've always liked these servos. They're always been my favorite. Um, it's the Savox servos, 15-2 spline, steel gear, full ball bearing. Very nice servo. Like I say, it's brand new. Um, you can take this and touch. Yeah, it's dry. Yeah, it's dry. So, I'm just going to take this, stick this on here like so. It's very easy to do. Stick it on there. And now you kind of want to crisscross these when you tighten them. So, like I say, you know, the way I look at it is you spend so much money on this hobby. Why would you want to ruin your RC car or cause, possibly cause damage to your RC car by driving it in the snow, rain, through a puddle if you're a rock crawler guy? I just think, to me, I just think it's completely stupid. But, I don't know, some people, I guess they're sponsored, you know, on YouTube here. And, uh... They get free RCs and free stuff all the time. Me, I don't. I'm all real, and I don't. I don't BS around with you guys. I tell you guys the raw, honest truth, how I genuinely feel about stuff. Um, and I do it because I'm an honest guy. So, you know, I, I feel like you know a lot of people do understand that that I'm honest, and I'm not going to steer them the wrong way. I'll do the best of my ability that I can do to let you guys know, kind of my tips and tricks. Like I said, I get no benefit off this. I'm not getting paid by YouTube. You know, I don't got any sponsorship. Anything and everything I buy is with my own money. But anyway, the only thing I don't like about the server is how short this lead is. Now, on the, for example, on the Creighton 8S, I love the steering electronics modular or electronics module design. I really love that. Like the Arma Infraction has an electronics module design. I really love that design. Everything comes out at once for the electronics. Super easy. I love it. But, and the nice thing about the Creighton 8S is literally this servo goes directly into the wire. Literally, like, you got the receiver box right behind it, literally. So, I really, really like that a whole, whole lot. So, you don't have to worry about the longness of this. doesn't really matter. But, uh, if you have, like, other rig, like a low C5T, um, HPI Baja 5T, 5B, 5SC, whatever you got, you're going to have to get an extension. So possibly so anyway uh thanks for watching this is alex rc freak out i just want to do a quick video i'm showing you guys what to do and uh i mean if you're really paranoid if you want to like if this is a lot of shops do carry just this one they don't carry the waterproof one usually unless you specially order it at least currently where i live in spokane here um so anyway if you do want one of these you can make this waterproof. you could put a very thin bead of clear silicone around the edge here I mean, very thin, or you can even use that silicone conformable coating around the edge here, and it'll waterproof the edge if you want to do that. And it's clear. It dries completely clear, so you would never really know. Um, that is a thought. You could also put an O-ring, a very thin, not a thick O-ring, right, right over these splines, and then stick the servo horn there so that way it seals it. Um, just word of caution, that can cause strain on your motor and possibly over time burn out the servo. So just be careful when doing that. So... Usually they do have an O-ring on, on save boxes, waterproof or not. They do have an O-ring underneath here on the case. So just be cautious of that. So anyway, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Alex RC Freak out. Peace, y'all.